On behalf of the club, I'm pleased to announce Carl's assistant for the next two seasons will be Adelaide United legend and former captain Ross Aloisi. I'd like to open up the floor to any questions. Roscoe, it must be a pretty uh, proud moment for you coming home. How do you feel? Oh, I'm very, very grateful to be given the opportunity to come back and coach Adelaide United. I coach here in the W League um, and it's a huge honour to be back, especially being a proud South Australian and, and former captain of the club, um, to be Carl's assistant. Carl, what's the sort of attributes that Ross has that made you uh, want to bring him in? Yeah, look, I've known Ross for a long time. The first time, you know, we played together as teenagers, so um, known a long time. And his biggest asset is he, he wants to win. Same as me, we want to win and we want to bring that culture into the club about winning and developing the young players. How do you think that history can help the two of you work together? Yeah, most definitely. You know, um, Ross was the first captain of the club in the A-League and he drove a lot of the culture and a lot of the values in that first two years of the club. Um, so we'll be looking to, to bring similar values back to the club. So the old skip is your number two now. Is that a bit of a, a role reversal for you? Um, <laughs> no, not at all. Um, you know, um, back then I was, I suppose, the oldest statement of the of the team back then and um, got on very well with Ross and and hopefully I helped his um, time at the club back then. How did it all come about? Bruce, I don't know, maybe you're the best person to ask, but how did uh, Bruce's uh, appointment come to be? Look, I always think the head coach should have an overwhelming say on who their assistant is and, and who they work with. Uh, Carl made it abundantly clear uh, that Ross was his number one pick. Um, from then I, I contacted Ross. <laughs> when I first came, Ross was captain, so it was a bit of a role reversal, but um, it's great to speak to Ross again. Um, you know, I was, I was keen to, to get him back in as well. The whole club was supportive of it. Um, and in my role, it's really just to support Carl and give him the best sort of tools he can to be as successful as possible. Um, if that's bringing Ross Aloisi in, I'm all for it. And it's, it's great to have them both back here um, at Cooper Stadium. And, you know, they, they trust each other 100% and they've got a long-standing relationship. And I think it's a, it's a good mix. It's a good match. Bruce, you mentioned providing the best tools possible to be successful. The club has had to, well, the club's agreed to, you know, let some of the players go overnight. Three pretty key players for the club. Is that kind of the commercial reality of where things are at in the A-League with uh, the impacts of COVID and, and that kind of thing? Look, I think for us, you know, this has always been uh, our philosophy, our play. So we want the best young players and we want them to use Adelaide United as, as a stepping stone for, for bigger and better things. I always want to sign people who have a burning ambition to be better, to do well, and in the big global game that is football, um, you know, there's, there's bigger leagues, bigger opportunities overseas. So transfer deadline day was a busy one for, 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 for us as a club. Um, but, you know, it's clear that if Craig Goodwin and Isaias don't leave last year, Riley McGree never comes. If Riley McGree doesn't leave, then, you know, the next person doesn't get an opportunity either. So it's just part and parcel of, of, of the global nature of our game and I envisage the club will continue to make such transactions in the future. So United to some degree is going to be a selling club going forward? I don't think any Australian club has the power to be a buying club in the global market that is world football. Carl, we see a lot of Aussie players um, leaving. Um, it's a bit of a, a, a barren market, so to speak. Are we going to see even more young players get an opportunity? And, how difficult do you think it's going to be in, in recruiting players? Um, yeah, look, the market is the way it is at the moment in, in Australia. We're always, I suppose, lower to the European and other Asian markets. Um, but we've said this, um, you know, I think I said this during the last couple of games. If you're a young player, Australian player and you want to play and drive and get to that next level, this is the club to be at because we're going to play the young players. How do you feel about it, Carl? I mean, you've lost your first choice goalkeeper and, and three of your most key attacking players. So how do you feel as a coach? You, you, you've got to put the... Yeah, look, on the <clears throat> yeah, I want the strongest team possible to so we can get results. But um, 
I'm quite happy. I'm, I'm happy for those players to get that opportunity to go on and, and make a better name for themselves and prove themselves. That's what I am as a coach. I want the players that want to play and want to improve and go on to bigger and better things. And if we can provide that um, platform for these players, then I'm happy with that. How confident are you feeling that you can now attract the players that you want to, to fill all those gaps? Um, yeah, well, that's a challenging time for us to, to be able to attract players um, that are overseas to come back and play here or we're um, busily looking now at the young Australian players that are around Australia and that want an opportunity to play in the A-League to then go on and, and realise their dreams. Rose, are you happy with the, the transfer fees that you got for the four, out, for the four main outside players? Yeah, I think, uh, I think we did uh, good business. I think that's clear. Um, if it wasn't, we wouldn't have let him go. Um, but yeah, I think you know the, the, there's a lot of different things that go into those uh, agreements. Um, and the more successful those players are, the more successful the club will also be financially going forward. So those, those sort of clauses are built in those, those agreements as well. So when we say we wish them all the best, we, we genuinely, genuinely mean that. But um, yeah, it's just part and parcel of, of, of the game. I know people are... Uh, the best players will always leave. And, and there's always a bit of consternation when, the, when, when they do leave. Um, having such a busy transfer deadline period, it might be a little bit of indigestion in terms of all these players going, who's going to come in and all the rest. But we look forward to making some uh, signing announcements in the coming days as well. Um, so, so there will be some players uh, coming in, obviously. Um, and like Carl said, we'll continue to look. And, you know, I think if you're a young Australian player, you, for me, you know, where else would you rather be? We're yeah. not selling players to here, there and everywhere. We're talking about players going to Europe. So getting the opportunity to play a league football, getting an opportunity to go to Europe. This is what the club's about. This is what we've said from, for, for the last 18 to 24 months. And this is what we've proven to be doing. So, you know, I think when decisions are made, where players go and where they sign, and if, if they're looking at the longer term, I think Adelaide United is the club for, for them. It's great from a, an Australian perspective and a Socceroos perspective to see young Aussies in Europe, but for a young player who bought a number eight, Riley McGree shirt or whatever, last season, I mean, how do you justify or what do you say to the fans who want to come and watch the Reds every week that essentially you said you're always going to lose your best player? So how do you justify that? To the fans, what do you say to the fans? Look, I think the fans have always been very supportive. You know, even when I was a player, they were supportive when I left and when I returned. Who's, Riley's left already once, he's returned, he's left again. Um, and, you know, I think the fans just have to have faith in the fact that we know what we're doing and it's incumbent on us to, to find replacements for these players. You know, like I said, if if Isaias and Goodwin don't leave, then they never had the chance to see that number eight in Riley McGree. It's part and parcel of the game, you know. Ajax is the biggest club in Holland. They're a selling club. We're talking about bigger numbers and bigger players, but essentially the philosophy is the same. Um, I think the, the, the fans understand that. As long as you give the fans success or hope, I think they'll still turn up. Ross, um, you were pretty well established up there in Brisbane. You had your clinic or your holidays, um, football stuff that you, you did. Was it a difficult decision at all? Did you have to think about it? And was there a lot of things to weigh up? Yeah, it wasn't an easy decision at all to make. You know, I, I started up the female football development program for young female footballers, and that's going really well. It's still going. Um, I've got uh, some good young female football coaches taking that over as well. I'll oversee everything. And, and the family was important too. Um, difficult to leave the family, but in football, uh, sometimes you have to have to do these things, and hopefully we can be together soon. So the family won't be coming back to Adelaide today. No. And what are some of the things that you think you can bring um, to the club in support of Carl and, and the players? I, I definitely implement Carl's structures, playing structures, and uh, the club's uh, values um, within the playing group, and, and drive. I mean, a winning mentality. Uh, I think that's what I'm good at as well um, and I did that in, in Brisbane in the first couple of seasons and hopefully we can do the same here. Um, Carl, do you expect the team to be competitive this year? Because I mean, only when you took over they were 
incredibly good. Um, found some great form. Probably could have made a good run in the finals, perhaps if there were just a few more games to get you in there. With so many key players leaving, do you still expect to make a crack at the finals for the upcoming season? Um, yes. As you say, we've lost um, some really good players, but we've still got some really good players still left at the club. So, um, And we're looking to strengthen the, the, the squad. So um, we expect to be competing for finals. You know, that's Adelaide is, that's what we're about. We've always said that we're a team that expects to make finals every year and this year won't be any different. What, what was your, what's your role with, I mean, Bruce is selling some of your best players overnight and, and you understand the reality of that, but as a coach you say, like, Bruce, give me one more year with Riley? Or I mean, how does that dynamic work? No, look, at the, at the end of the day, we have to put the club first and also look after the player's interest as well. And um, at, the, at this moment in time, it was the right decision for Riley to make that move now. Um, he needs to be playing football um, at the highest level to, for him to keep on improving as a young player. Bruce, you had really, sorry, you had really high praise for Riley on Twitter today. Just how big a talent do you think he is? Oh, I think he's the best young Australian player on the 23, I think, in the world. I think that's, that's, that's clear to me. Um, you know, it's clear to the Adelaide United fans as well probably but that's the whole idea about him making that big step and, and going back to Europe because that's that's on him now to, to prove that to, to everyone in the UK um, and I've got no doubt that, that he'll be able to do that. Obviously it's a big move, it's, it's, it's a tough league he's gone to but that's what you need to do and, and, and to, to show your best self. Um, as the pay structure becomes a little bit clearer where maybe just a word on Opseth and, and Jakobsen. I mean, I think Christian said something today on, on Instagram. I didn't read it too much into it. Are, are they likely to be staying now or is, are they going to be moving on? Opseth's gone home, so he's back in Europe. Um, and Jakobsen, I'm very confident that we'll be able to keep him. Bruce, uh, you're a club legend sitting beside two legends. You've got the most goals for Adelaide United. With the, I guess, um, structure of where the team is and, and being somewhat of a selling team. Do you expect to see players kind of stick around for as long as you did or other players did and have a crack at some of those records like Galekovic obviously most appearances yourself most goals. Are we going to see players stick I think around so. long enough? I think so. You know we've got Michael Moroni still here. He's, he's, he's been here a very long time. Um, there, there are some players who will always play A-League right and, and there's some players who just want to play A-League and they're good, solid A-League players. And that's fantastic. And, and, you know, if we can get those sort of players, mix them in with some young players and some experienced players, you know, it's not just about, you know, putting Adelaide United in a box of, they're just young players and they sell players. And it's not about that. It's about, there's no point having a team full of young players if there's no experienced players for them to learn off. There's no point having a team full of foreigners when there's no local flavour to it, you know. So, yes, we want players to come here with ambitions to go overseas and, and have that burning desire within. But similarly, there's nothing wrong with having a burning desire to be the best Adelaide United player in the history, to achieve the most caps for Adelaide United in, in the history or score the most goals for Adelaide United. They're, they're all legitimate goals and we've got to find a mix of, of talent because you don't want a massive turnover of players every year. But again, the, the, the best ones will leave. Is this a bigger turnover than you anticipated? No, I think it's about on par. I think, oh, no. I was just going to say, does that, money, does that money that you've raised from transfers, does that get pumped back into, into the squad and signing new players? Or does the reality of COVID mean some of that just goes to recuperating losses? So in my negotiating skills in selling these players, I'll use the same negotiating skills with the chairman to try and get uh, more of those funds redirected this way so we can uh, fill those gaps. Is that right, Carl? <laughs> Sounds about right to so, me. So, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm negotiating on two fronts. As far as the salary cap goes, do you feel like you're pretty well, because my understanding is the salary cap will come down for each club. Do you feel like you're pretty well... Uh, well placed to kind of be around the mark given the moves and, and transfers? I think so. I think so. I think there's there's still a bit of work to do on the on the financial front. 
But yeah, the salary cap's not, not something that concerns me at this stage.